welcome to the State of the Data Consortium. We'll get started here in just a minute. My name is Linda Detterman and I'm with ICPSR. And this is, of course, a presentation that is part of the 2022 Data Fair. And we're delighted that you have joined us. Um, please, uh, uh, the floor and the ceiling and everything else is yours. And um, we'll enjoy or excited to hear what you have to say. Thank you very much, Linda. Um, and thanks to everyone who is joining us today. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you about the state of um, ICPSR, the data consortium. Um, I would love to be able to hear you singing, so I'm sorry to hear that you're muted, but please do sing along. We, we are often feel like singing because uh, things, are, things are going well. Um, so what are we up to? Well, as you know, ICPSR is celebrating its 60, uh, 60th birthday and we are ready to go for the next 60 years. We have a stable and growing membership. Um, our sponsored awards are at the um, highest level um, uh, that they've ever been at and they continue to grow. We are, uh, our sponsors appreciate the work that we do for them and for the research community and continue to support both our dissemination of data in archives and our leadership in data stewardship to the research and educational communities. Our funding and staff growth continues as a result. Our staff has actually grown a lot. You'll see that shortly. We are working hard on improving the infrastructure, the, the platform that we use to disseminate data to you, that we use to make resources available to you, to provide educational instruction to you. Um, and the te technology is always changing in ways that allow us to do things better. And we are making improvements so that we can, uh, we can take advantage of those innovations to improve our delivery. We are incredibly grateful to our data communities, to our members, to our sponsors, to all of the participants in the summer program, to the instructors in the summer program, to everyone who comes um, to ICPSR um, in person or virtually um, and participates in our community. You are the reason that we exist and you give meaning to our, um, to our work every day. And we are also going today to inaugurate a, uh, a new uh, award that we think um, reflects the, the, the true meaning of ICPSR. And so we're excited um, to do that uh, at, the end of the, at the end of my presentation today. As I said, ICPSR has been exhibiting steady membership growth. Um, so if you look at this, you can see that we have added uh, uh, had a net addition. Obviously, some people leave, some people come, but we've had a net addition um, to our membership every year for the past decade. Um, this has been true even as our members have oftentimes been struggling through their own financial difficulties, um, particularly during the pandemic and the associated recession. Um, but but our members also know that data is important. Data is important for instruction. It's important for, for research and having access to the highest quality, um, best documented data, uh, social science data in the world is valuable. So even though um, we know that it, uh, it, it, it requires a, a sacrifice on their part, to take advantage of the ICPSR membership, it is the value makes it worth it to them. You can see, particularly, we have um, we've had growing membership for um, what we call extensive. So those are the R ones, intensives, um, masters. Those are uh, educational institutions, our bachelor's degree, bachelor's institutions, all across the United States institutions of higher education know that the value of ICPSR membership is 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 worth it and they are growing. We also have associate members. Those are statistical agencies and think tanks um, that have also been joining ICPSR. And of course, we are not just here in the United States or in North America. We, are, we have members all around the globe um, who both contribute to our data resources and have make use of our data resources and our educational opportunities. And we are grateful to all of you. As I mentioned, our sponsored funding for both data and data tools has been, um, has been um, 
large and helps to sustain the organization. It allows us to do things that um, for particular research community. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, throughout we, last year, we actually received our largest um, philanthropic award ever for the establishment of a new social media data archive. And we also received our largest ever, in fact, the largest ever um, social science award given by the National Science Foundation for um, the research data ecosystem. So this shows you our annual um, expenditures um, on sponsored funding that really help to support um, everything that we do. As I mentioned, some of that sponsored funding has been sponsoring new archives like the social media archive, which will be coming soon. Um, the, the archive of the Millennial Ch Millennium Challenge Corporation, which is now up and running, the archive of the um, PACODER, the Patient-Centered Outcomes um, Re uh, Institute, th their data are coming uh, to ICPSR. So those are new um, topical archives that are providing new high quality data for the research and educational communities. We also have several new externally funded projects that are not data archives, but are supporting the, the, the life cycle of the research of, um, of research data and the research community. So the Peers Data Hub is sponsored by the National Science Foundation to support the um, STEM education research data community and improving access to resources for uh, uh, research on STEM, on STEM education and helping to um, improve practices in data management. Similarly, the SBECCC, the Social Behavioral and Economic COVID Coordinating Center, is sponsored by the National Institutes of Health, and its job is to um, support research um, on all kinds of social, behavioral, and economic aspects of the of the pandemic of of COVID, um, including um, data management, helping researchers to access data, helping researchers to share data, helping researchers to um, harmonize data across different um, different COVID-related research projects and to um, develop common data elements that are specific to COVID and to the policies and the mitigation efforts that um, have been um, adopted or used um, during COVID so that when we do research, we it becomes transparent and reproducible that people understand what it is that they're seeing when we say that we're looking at the effects of vaccines and the effects of mandates and the effects of behavioral responses and policy responses to the pandemic. All of that requires that there be consistency in the data. And SBECCC is addressing um, that challenge for um, this most important challenge to all of our communities um, in COVID. Um, and then, of course, the research data ecosystem, which I will talk about more. As I mentioned, it was um, an NSF award, the largest NSF has award ever NSF has ever made to the social and behavioral sciences. Um, and it will make research data accessible to broaden participation in the frontiers of scientific research. It will modernize the existing software platform that ICPSR has and share that with the, um, the, the world and with the data research research data community to support the entire research um, data life cycle. We continue um, to receive support from many different uh, sponsors who help us to make data available to you. These include um, centers like, uh, they include several institutes within the National Institutes of Health, including um, the National Institute of Aging and the National Institute for Child Health and uh, Health and um, and ICHD, uh, the the Eunice Shriver uh, uh, and ICHD, and uh, also other um, uh, other sponsors from the foundation community, from um, and from other agencies, uh, the Child and Family Data Archive. Um, the Census Bureau is supporting our work on record linkage um, to improve the research data that, get, that goes out to you. So all of these sponsors help us to make available both um, 
uh, data for around particular topics that they care about and that we know that all of you care about. All right. As a result, our holdings and our activities have grown. We now have over 83,000 um, data studies, um, about a little, uh, I guess, a little bit more than uh, about, geez, more than 10% now are restricted. So 70,000 of those studies are uh, on demand that you can download when you come to the ICPSR platform. About 12,000 of those are restricted to protect confidentiality. We also have about 6,000 um, data sets that are, that are mostly associated with individual articles that have been published elsewhere. And so those are the, uh, the data that are associated just with that article. And those are published as is um, to support the, um, the uh, the transparency and reproducibility of, um, of research publications. Speaking of publications, our um, data-related um, bibli bibliography of data-related publications now has not just over 100,000 publications in its repository, but 103,715 publications which use ICPSR data and which are linked to that data so that when you read that article, you can see the data that are um, that uh, are, were used to generate the analysis in that data. And when you're trying to figure out what data you need or that the students that you're working with need, you can look and uh, see what those data have been used for and other things. These data contribute 6 million variables to the social sciences variables database. If you are looking for a particular topic, look in the SSVD, find the variables you need and you find, and then go back to one of those 83,000 data sets that you can get here at ICPSR. Last year, there were 800 and almost 850,000 data sets downloaded. Um, by 31,000 different people who come to who use their My Data accounts to get data from ICPSR. We had over 300,000 visits to the ICPSR um, site. We are, um, we're proud of what we do um, to make um, our resources available to you. Um, and and we're, we're pleased that, that, that people are, are, are taking advantage of those resources um, every day. The ICPSR summer program continues to thrive. Um, for, uh, for two years, we had uh, a fully remote summer program. This year, we had a hybrid summer program. We were very happy to be able to welcome um, uh, people back to Ann Arbor, um, but all and also to continue to offer online options. We expect to have a hybrid program again in 2023 um, and hoping that we will have more people come back to participate in this um, in this program, which is uh, which is just, a, it's an amazing experience. It is both the opportunity to learn about particular subjects in research methods, um, mostly quantitative, but also qualitative methods. Um, and it is, it, but it is much more than just that. It is also a chance to meet um, and collaborate and listen to our Blaylock lectures, um, to um, take advantage of short workshops, to come to our picnics, um, we are uh, we we have a lot of fun during the summer program. We have cool T-shirts. Uh, yeah, I have to say yes. The picture is from a picnic. Um, we want to express our gratitude for the interim leadership of Mike Trougett, um, who has been leading the summer program since um, the uh, the winter of 2020. He stepped in um, to lead the program, not knowing that pretty that would not only was he leading the program that was about to launch, but that it was he had he had to pivot and um, make it put it completely online. He has done that admirably um, in 20 and 21 and then 22, our three um, pandemic summers. We have now welcomed on September 1st, um, Rob Francisi to be the 10th director of the summer program. Mike continues um, here at ICPSR. Um, we're actually, he's worked since on and off since he was a graduate student, uh, um, I believe in the 1970s. Um, so he is continuing here through the end of the year to help make for a smooth transition. And we are working hard to look forward to that 2023 program 
um, and when we hope to uh, welcome more people back to Ann Arbor, um, as well as continue to have, as we said, the online option um, that we know works best um, for people for a variety of reasons. Um, ICPSR is in a strong financial position. That is because of um, strong external funding from our sponsors. So about 44% of our funding um, uh, comes from sponsors and generates indirects. Um, about 36% of our funding comes from our membership and the fees that they pay to create a, a sustainable um, data archive that is unique in the world. Um, and about 15% of our um, revenues come from the summer program um, instructions and about 5% come from um, philanthropic and other, um, and other sources, um, including, uh, including the Institute for Social Research, our, our host organization for which we are very grateful. Um, this, this funding and, and uh, our, our vision to do more for um, the research and educational community has led to uh, an unprecedented growth in ICPSR staff. Um, when I uh, when I became director in in 2016, we had um, uh, 96 employees. We now have 168 employees. We have most of this growth has been in the last three years. So during the pandemic, we have onboarded. Um, you know, 70% of the people who now work here. Um, it is, uh, it has been remarkable. It has, it is a testament to the, um, the commitment of our staff and our faculty that um, people have been onboarded and integrated into the organization, whether they have been here physically in person or working on Zoom all the time, or some combination. Um, ICPSR is now working hybrid. I am sitting here in our in our home building, the Perry Building in Ann Arbor. Um, I've been here pretty much every working day for the last, uh, I don't know, year and a half. Um, on any given day, probably 30 to 40% of our organization is here in person. And the other uh, people are working remotely from locations um, across the United States, and it's it is uh, that has helped us to understand the tools that all of you were use to inter uh, interact with us and helped us to improve on um, the tools um, by which we deliver um, the resources that we give to you. Um, and so it's uh, we we have uh, it has been a it is it has been transformative. Um, and exciting, and we continue to grow. Actually, this is when I say we have, I believe, 10 positions um, that are posted. ICPSR is still hiring. We are growing more. If you know people who would like to be a part of ICPSR, um, we are looking for people in research um, administration and project management in operations, uh, in, in DevOps and in um, development. Um, uh, software development. We are we have lots of positions, and so please um, please look at our site and and come join us. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of our goals for the infrastructure improvements that we are undertaking. Um, we are reinventing our data systems from ingest to curation to dissemination. We are developing a new and more flexible data model to support. Um, the, the, our, to support different data types, um, including the ingestion, curation, and dissemination of lots of different data types and different data and data at different scales. Um, this benefits our members and our sponsors um, with more efficient data deposits, especially if you're data, de you know, depositing really large files. We want to make that a smoother, easier experience. We want to make it easier for people to find data, to discover that data that they're looking for. Um, and uh, to make that uh, to make that easier by better connecting data resources across uh, across our platform and across um, between our bibliography and our data resources with all of our um, amazing metadata um, that that our curators produce for you um, with improved kind of online data uh, an online sort of interactive codebook that we. Um, you will be seeing in the in the months to come. 
on our priority list is improving confidential data access. As I said, more um, uh, a large portion of our data is now restricted to protect confidentiality. We have multiple modes, different tiers of access, depending on the sensitivity of the data, um, from whether you're sort of using it a local computer secure there, or you're using our virtual enclave, or even coming and working in our very nice but very locked down room in the basement of the building. It has beautiful murals of, uh, of Lake Michigan, but you but no windows um, for most secure data. Most of our data is not, is not accessed that way. We are improving confidential access, the access to confidential data and streamline that process, better data tools to facilitate sharing data, analyzing data. Um, we are constantly um, trying to improve the user experience and put the user at the center of, um, of, what, we, of what we deliver to you. Um, so that when you come to um, our front door to the ICPSR website, you, uh, you can easily navigate it and find the resources and the data that you're interested in. ICPSR looking forward, um, we are always looking forward. We know that data is becoming much, much more important um, every day, data is everywhere. That means that data literacy is all the more important for, um, for responsible and active citizenship. We want people to, to know how to analyze data to inform their own decision-making for that of people who are designing policies or, um, or people who are voting. Um, so we want, uh, that, is, that is what we um, put center um, to what we do. We want to increase transparency for research to increase the confidence and trust that people have in the scientific enterprise and the social scientific enterprise. And we do that by protecting confidentiality, by preserving data, by making data act, um, accessible, and by increasing transparency. We engage in quantitative methods and data training with innovative delivery. As you've seen, we were able to just in a minute um, well, it might not have felt like a minute. It was a long minute for our for some of our program staffers and for all of our our team that uh, that delivers things online to build to to make people aware of the uh, the resources that we have, but also to encourage researcher networks and collaboration, and to build a legacy for future data users. We want data to be available now and tomorrow. This is uh, the research data ecosystem is supporting, we like to call it a super highway um, that covers the entire research data life cycle from the early parts of uh, the data enter the research enterprise when data is being collected responsibly, it is being organized and curated, it is being preserved, it then can be accessed responsibly, found um, and analyzed and, we, and RDE supports that entire process. And that means that we live in this happy world in which data can be reused, um, increasing um, the, the productivity of the research enterprise and the value that we all get from the, from the data that, um, that our research, is, uh, research community is, co is collecting. So thank you to our council members. Um, uh, Randall Aki, who is at UCLA and is also right now in the, in the White House office, uh, Council, uh, supporting the Council of Economic Advisors. Dave Armstrong is our chair. Um, I think it's our first Canadian chair. He's at Western University. Bob Ray Bordelon at Princeton, who has come back and stayed on the council as our past vice chair, because our past chair, um, Lisa Cook, to whom we are very grateful, has now gone to work uh, as a member of the uh, Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve and so was not able to stay. Mike Caffarella at MIT, John Cawthorn at Wayne State, James Duaron at the University of Alberta, Kristen Eschenfelder at the University of Wisconsin, Susan Frazier Kawasi at Prairie View A&M, Mark Hansen at Columbia, Trevon Logan at The Ohio State University, see the sacrifices we make, Gisela Sin at the University of Illinois, Ken Smith at the University of Utah, and Kent, Catherine Wallman, um, late retired from the U.S. Office of Management and Budget, but never retired ever, the Chief Statistician of the United States. Um, so thank you to all of them. Um, and thank you to our uh, members, to our official and designated representatives who, um, who, who represent our members and who uh, promote training, sharing, discovery, and use of data every single day 
Um, we, we are so grateful to you. We learned so much from you. We appreciate you. And now it is, I have to say, my great honor um, to award the first um, Piper Simmons Data Contributor of the Year Award. Um, the Depositor um, of the Year Award was established in 2022 to recognize the outstanding efforts of a data contributor to share important data contributing significantly to social and behavioral research. The award um, was proposed by ICPSR staffers in honor of our colleague, Piper Simmons, who served as an ICPSR acquisitions champion for over 32 years of service to ICPSR. And, and anyone who knew Piper knows that she was the most warm and caring and passionate person. Um, she retired in 2019 and passed away very unfortunately in 2022. She left a legacy of working with um, ICPSR researchers to navigate sharing data through ICPSR. We are, um, we are so grateful to Piper um, and, we are, uh, and uh, we are very pleased um, and uh, to be able to award in her name and in her honor this inaugural award to Claire Camp Dush of the University of Minnesota and Wendy Manning of Bowling Green for their study, the National Couples, High, Couples Health and Time Study which they deposited and made available to you, our data community, um, through the NICHD sponsored data archive at ICPSR, data sharing for demographic research. Um, co congratulations, Claire and Wendy, and let me share with all of you um, the, uh, the plaque that we will be sending to, uh, one to Claire and one to Wendy um, to, recognize um, their, uh, their work um, in sharing and chat with the research community. Um, so I think that we're going to now let Claire and Wendy say a word and then um, we'll hear from DSDR. Thank you so much. Claire and I are so honored for this award that acknowledges the amazing career, spirit, and accomplishments of Piper Simmons and also thank the committee for selecting and chat. We never met Piper, but based on viewing the videos and reading the remembrances of her life, we know we would have benefited from her passion and expertise. Our goal at the outset of our project was to make our data available to the community. We didn't want to hold on to it for our own use, but wanted as many people to use it as possible. We certainly didn't want to show up at ICPSR with cardboard boxes full of data that needed to be <laughs> archived. And while we know we would have been welcomed with our boxes by Piper, uh, it's much easier to archive data if you plan it at the outset of a project, and we admire the hard work and effort that Piper and her colleagues have engaged in over the years to preserve and protect data for the research community. There was a time when data sharing was not a central part of social sciences, and demographers in particular have strived um, to be at the forefront of sharing data. And we just want to acknowledge our funders for the project from the Eunice Shriver Kennedy Institute of Child Health and Human Development, in particular, Rana Popkin, our program officer at the Population Dynamics Branch, who guided our project along with Regina Burris and the chief of the branch, um, Rebecca Clark, as well as amazing set of program officers. We also appreciate the nomination from the Data Sharing for Demographic Research team. Uh, led by John Marcott and always helpful Sarah Rush, who have helped us navigate our way to releasing these data. And we've come to know how much work occurs behind the scenes and to curate data and really admire their skills and knowledge. And we're so excited because the NCHAT data has been downloaded over a thousand times and uh, John and Wendy know I've been monitoring that. So we're so excited about that. And it's our sincere hope that new generations of researchers will use these data to answer questions about health and well-being disparities focused on racial and ethnic populations and individuals with diverse sexual and gender identities. And these populations um, are often overlooked in research because they're not in the majority or they're not uh, or people that are have these identities are not the ones who get grants to collect data, but they're just so critical members of our society and we need to help everybody reach their full potential. So our goal is to move beyond a deficit perspective and understand the mechanisms that underlie health disparities. And we've really taken a team approach with this. We've drawn on a really large community of researchers and scholars to develop NCHAT and we're so grateful for 
our team and the entire team of folks who have given us feedback across the way. Uh, we're really imagining new ways of using these data. We are working on biomarker data, longitudinal data collection. So hopefully we'll be doing more deposits with John's team, which we were already talked with him about. Um, focusing on how context matters, including structural racism, heterosexism, and sexism. And then it's really a priority of ours, like ICPSR, to uh, prioritize data equity. And we want to have diverse individuals have a seat at our table when we're developing these surveys. Um, we have papers focused on a range of outcomes related to NCHAT, health discrimination, COVID stress, racial trauma, work and family conflict, suicide, um, depression, anxiety, and many more papers with all of our grad students, postdocs, research staff, and faculty at Minnesota, Bowling Green, and Ohio State. And we're really excited to hear how others will use the data to move forward our understanding of well-being during these unprecedented times. And just to wrap up, it's such a pleasure, and we're just so honored for this award, and we really feel the light of Piper shining on us, and I'm um, sure she's excited to see these data get out there, and it really energizes us to work hard to make sure as many folks as possible will use these data, and we're just so grateful, and thank you very much. Thank you. John Marcotte? who's the director of data sharing for demographic research. Do you want to say a couple words? Yeah, let me chime in. Let me. Um, so DSDR, of course, congratulates uh, the NCHA team, Claire and Wendy, for winning this inaugural award. Um, it's great from our perspective to see Piper honored. Um, she, she was a, a wonderful colleague for, for many years. But one thing we to keep in mind is NCHAT, what is NCHAT? NCHAT is a study of couples. And what's important about it, aside from being a great study, is that it has representative samples of diverse ethnic, gender, and sexual individuals. It's a really special study in that regard. They put a lot of effort into their sampling. Another key feature is the time use data during COVID-19. Um, these data have an incredible potential. Um, Claire and Wendy, the PIs, formed an exemplary partnership with DSDR and ICPSR throughout the deposit and curation process. Um, wasn't just they worked with us, which was incredible. And this partnership produced excellent data for secondary analysis while ensuring the protection of human subjects through deductive disclosure safeguards. And that's, that's vital because these data contain sensitive information. We wanna make them available, make them available in an appropriate way. And DSDR looks forward to collaborate with Claire and Wendy on future NCHAT data deposits. And uh, we're excited and congratulations, Claire and Wendy and NCHAT. Thank you, John. All right. Well, th thank you all. Thank you for joining us today. Um, thanks to the to all the folks at, at DSDR and ICHD, all the folks. I know that MCHAT is produced by a team um, that you two lead. Um, and thanks especially to, um, to Piper's family for joining us today. We, um, if you, if you knew Piper, you, you knew, what it was to feel her warmth and um and it's just it's it's really um it's great to be able to honor her in this way and this is a really appropriate um study so so thank you all um uh just a reminder you can always reach out to us and i think now i'm going to uh, turn off the slides and take any questions um that we have so thank you all. Um, yeah. All right, and we don't there have any questions. questions? We, have we don't no have any questions, questions in the queue right now. So um, um, wait, I'll uh, do a dance. You can do a little singing, maybe oh, where's the see singing pop thing? in, but uh, I, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. So I, uh, I if was, you know Maggie, she likes karaoke. So that's I a dangerous did. suggestion. <laughs> yeah, I was, um, I, I'm going to my stepfather's 80th birthday on sun, birthday party on Sunday, and someone was asking me if I was going to sing because they remembered my singing um, when I was young, and I'm like, no, I don't think so, um, <laughs> and definitely not here. Um, so, what was my favorite thing that happened since the last state of the consortium? Gosh, um, well, I suppose like. I could say, you know, having RDE funded. So the Research Data Ecosystem Project is one that we worked on with NSF we, um, and that we really um, 
we crafted for a long time and really tried to figure out what it was that was going to be most important and how we could best um, uh, develop the, the proposal and the, the plans um, for this new infrastructure. So, so that was a lot of work and having it awarded was very exciting. Turns out that then they award it and then you have to do it and we are working. So, that, so it was, you know, you're happy and then you work hard. It's how these things go. Um, similarly, um, when we when we received the funding for the social media archive, that's that is clearly so important. Social media is um, so influential in our societies today, and the ways that people have to access that data are so limited and often not transparent, often not reproducible, often. Um, and we really it is it is so critical for us to be able to analyze these data that are so influential and understand what their um, what their role is in our society. So we're really um, excited to be able to try to um, to make some progress there in improving um, responsible access to that data. Um, actually, but the I, I should I suppose the maybe the number one like most exciting moments um, that we've had since the last data fair was were probably when we came back into the office when we reopened the building. We did have one moment when we were, we saw people during the um, during the pandemic because we made um, masks for everyone and people could drive up to ICPSR and hand them out. I know Linda was doing that. And that was so exciting because we weren't seeing anybody. But then the day that we first came back into the office and, um, and you know, we're, we're you know, well, it, we were all like Piper, we were all hugging each other. And you're trying to like, is it okay? We, we haven't touched anybody in a year we, and we, we, everybody is six feet away and everybody's masked. And we were, we were hugging each other with masks on because um, we were all so grateful to be back together and see each other. So those are, those are special moments from the last, uh, the last year or two. Um, ah. It says, you mentioned you're looking for new staff. What skills are you looking for? I work next to the Career Center on my campus. So we are looking for lots. So we're looking for lots of different kinds of skills. We have several positions in information technology. Yes, thank you, Linda, for putting up the link. We have several in, um, positions in information technology. So software developers, software engineers, um, DevOps. Um, we're hiring a security analyst, um, an IT security analyst. Um, we um, then we are also hiring people in our project program management and user support and some project management user support and some of those people are really kind of focused on project management. We are hiring a new project manager also for the social media archive who is somebody who is interested. We're looking for someone who's interested in data science who can help social science researchers um, work with social media data and assist them in. Um, in, in uh, accessing and analyzing those data because a lot of people have questions that they want, but they don't, but they've never worked with data of that scale or of that type before. So looking at, we're also looking for a new research administrator to help us with grant proposals. Um, so uh, not surprisingly, we, we, have, we have the absolute best research administrators in the world um, here at, uh, at ISR and ICPSR. I mean, I not that anybody's or else's are bad, but like ours are to die for. Um, and it is a great community and we, you know, but we do a lot of proposals. So we, we, we need, um, we need somebody new there. I think, did I cover, I think that's, uh, is there anybody else who's hiring? Oh, we're, we're actually looking for, um, I don't think that this position is posted right now, but we will be looking for um, a librarian as well to work on um, the bibliography of data related literature to our assist our bibliography team um, that will be posted soon um, and that again they just do amazing work um, both in understanding how our data get used and um, and in coming up with novel ways to connect uh, research products with data which we know is so important for researchers and for data users, you saw Claire wants to know who's using their data. What are they publishing? What are we doing? Uh, funders want to know that. Um, and uh, so, so our team um, is fabulous at doing that, and uh, and that team is growing. Um, I think, I think that's, I think that's kind of that's it. I see more things in the chat. What else we got there? Oh yeah, that's um, 
The link to those to all of our positions are there. Yes, and the link to NCHAT is there. Um, the other thing I would mention is that the NCHAT team um, is also part of the um, COVID um, coordinate the COVID research consortium that I mentioned that we host the, the coordinating center here. But um, but Claire and Wendy have done a great job as sort of members of that consortium sharing best practices in how to reach out, how to have an inclusive survey, how to um, to uh, to design your study to be inclusive. So you know they have they've been really exemplary measure, members of that consortium, as well as exemplary members you know in terms of, of ICPSR and share and DSDR and sharing their data. Um, but also sharing their methodology with other people who are also who are researching similar topics. Um, other other questions. I think we are uh, we are out of questions, and um, the uh, next group is going to jump in to start getting prepared for the next session. So um, thank you so much. Uh, Maggie for a, a thorough orientation to the to the state of our consortium. And congratulations again, Wendy and Claire, um, for uh, for data well done. And uh, we look forward to to more of that coming in over the years and, and tracking usage for you. So um, um, we appreciate uh, appreciate all of our depositors um, endlessly and in perpetuity. So uh, with that, uh, we will bid all of you adieu and hope that you will join us for the next session. Um, that will be launching at one o'clock p.m. Um, Eastern time. So, um, and thanks again for um, for joining us today. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, John. Thanks, Claire and Wendy. Thanks, everybody.